Hey guys, Andy here. And I just wanted to get real with y'all on today's video. So, sorry if it's not as well polished as uh, some of my other ones. I didn't even intend on making a video tonight, but I just had to once I saw the most recent video by my friend JT Suits. So, if you're watching this, JT, what a fam. In his recent video, he talked about his Navy videos getting uh, not necessarily demonetized, but the amount of ad revenue that he's been getting from them has been drastically reduced. And he went in and showed uh, his analytics reflecting, you know, when the changes happened, and those coincide with the recent YouTube ad policy revision. He is far from being the first one to complain about this system. There's been a lot of other higher-up YouTubers that have been talking about the very poor communication between YouTube and its content creators involving this revised ad rollout, which allows advertisers to flag content based off of certain natures, like uh, talking about war, military, that leaves a lot of um, generalities, I guess, out there for what could be defined as controversial involving war and the military and stuff like that. Because the kind of stuff we do, the kind of stuff he does mostly, is talk about uh, the Navy. He gives his opinions and he gives advice on what people should do if they're thinking about joining and like what life is like in the U.S. military and things like that. And it's been something that I've been doing since I joined back in 2010. And then even after I got out in 2015, I've been continuing to make videos talking about my life now after the military. And I just want to get honest with you guys right now. JT is honestly the reason why I decided to start up uh, talking about the military again. Um, I figured once I finished up with NFAX, I was just burnt out with talking about the military. I was burnt out with the military in general. I just wanted to go to school and just move on to the next chapter of my life. But seeing seeing people on YouTube like JT talk so earnestly about their experiences and to inform a newer audience about you know what they may expect joining the military and just keeping people informed like that it really took me back to when I started NFAX. I remember my very first NFAX episode was when I was still in the DEP program, and I even had the, the DEP shirt on when I did it. And I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about at all, but I still knew that I had to get information out there because information on the current Navy back in 2010 was very scarce. And you'd see a lot of, you know, very biased information, very much like you know, getting like a recruiter pamphlet and the Navy is the greatest thing on God's green earth and all this other stuff. And it certainly has has its benefits, certainly has its positives, but it also has its negatives too. And that's where people like JT come in to give a more unbiased opinion about what's been going on in the military and to just keep people informed of what the military is like now instead of like, well, back in the Cold War, this is how the Navy ran. And it's like, it's not the Cold War anymore. That doesn't really help recruits joining the military in 2017 or whenever you happen to watch this video. I don't know. But I looked at my own analytics and they do match up the same dates that JT saw his ad revenue dropping for his military videos. Now, it's not the same for all my videos, but it is specific to my Navy related videos. So. What does this mean for the future of Life After Navy and my other Navy-related content? Um, I'm not going to be stopping it. I'm not going to kill the series or anything like that. I still want to give as much information as I can about my experiences in the military, even if it does come at a cost of reducing my bottom line, you know, so be it, because... You know, I have different types of videos that earn me more money than those Navy videos do. And also, you know, just work for my side jobs and things like that with video editing more than covers what I may lose in ad revenue from those videos. But I feel that the information given in those videos is more important than a couple pennies lost. And um, JT, I hope if you're watching this, man, I hope you agree with me. I hope that you still keep fighting the good fight. I hope that you don't stop making Navy-related content. Even though YouTube is doing all this, 
um, I still think that you have a voice. And you have, like, what, nearly 40,000 subs, man? You, you have a very loud voice. Much louder than I could have ever have made, even during my heyday, you know, when I was doing NFAX and all that kind of stuff. And you have a lot of people that watch your videos, and I think that that is more important than a couple extra pennies a day. I would suggest keep making the Navy videos. Don't expect a whole lot of money from them, obviously. And just diversify the types of content that you're putting out there. And you're already pretty much doing that with the daily vlogs, man. Like, I, I sure as hell could not do the daily vlogs. That's, that's too much for me. So I definitely want to give uh, mad props to JT for, uh, for fighting the good fight. And brother, if you need any help, the military vlogging community here on YouTube sure as fuck has your back. Fuck the haters. Spray deep. Spray trooping. So... This is Andy San signing off, and uh, as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.